Okay, let's go over chapter 14. Um, chapter 14 is mostly about satellites, um, which is anything orbiting something else. I mean, we're a satellite around the sun. Um, the sun's a satellite around the galaxy, but why do you orbit something? Why do you go in a circle around something that pulls you by gravity? Why don't you fly directly into it? And the basic idea is shown in this picture here in the book. Um, so, yep, so here's the idea. Let's say you're on the top of a cliff, right? A five meter high cliff, and they chose five meters because it takes one second to fall five meters, right? The distance, the time it takes to fall, as you remember, is the square root of twice the distance divided by g. Twice of five is ten. Ten divided by ten is one. Okay, now you can see it. Right, time it takes to fall, we used this before and dropping meter sticks and stuff. Twice the distance you fall divided by g. Two times five is ten. Ten divided by ten is one, so it takes one second to fall five meters. So if you can throw something far enough, see the further you throw it, the faster you throw it, it takes one second. So if you can throw it fast enough where it gets way over here in one second, and if that distance is eight kilometers, eight thousand meters, or about five miles. So it ends up being about five miles. Then you're matching the curvature of the earth. So if you throw it fast enough as it falls, it matches the curvature of the earth and never hits the earth because the earth curves away. So all you gotta do is throw something at um, eight kilometers per second, which is the same as about 17,500 miles per hour. That's about five miles per second. And five miles in a second is like 17,500 miles an hour. Um, then it would orbit the Earth. Now, obviously, you're not going to do that. No gun can throw something that fast, and air resistance would slow it down anyway. But if you get above the air, which is about 100 miles up, or, yeah, about 100 miles, I typically say 100 kilometers is where space starts. It gets the air so thin, there's, like, no air resistance. Um, so all you got to do is get above the Earth far enough, like 100 miles, throw something at 8 kilometers per second, it'll match the curvature of the Earth, and it'll orbit. And that's what we basically do around the Sun. We're going fast enough in a circle around the sun that as we fall towards the sun, so we're constantly falling towards the sun, um, but we don't hit it because we go sideways and we just keep orbiting. Um, so that's the basic idea, okay? So the trick is to find how fast we go. And so if this is the sun and here's us, the simplest thing is a circular orbit. We go in a nice perfect circle. Um, and then our speed, again, that we have to go is roughly about 8,000 meters a second or 8 kilometers per second. Um, if we go faster than that, like let's say we go 10 kilometers per second, then we go in an ellipse. Instead of going in a circle, we go further away at one point and we come back to that point. And if we go even like 10.5 kilometers per second, we go in a bigger ellipse. We get even further away at one point and we come back. Um, and the sun is at one focus of the ellipse, like we talked about in astronomy. There's another focus over here. That's just an empty point in space. And finally, if we go, I think it's 11.2, 11.2 kilometers per second, then we're going fast enough around the sun that we actually escape it. We go off, we don't come back, and we're gone. And that's called the escape velocity. So there's two velocities, two basic velocities in this chapter that are interesting. Um, I can't write velocity right now. There's the escape velocity, how fast you have to throw something so it's gone forever. Gravity can't hold it back. And there's the orbital velocity, how fast you gotta throw it sideways. These are always sideways, right? You gotta throw it this way. Throw it towards the sun, we're gonna hit the sun. But if we go around the sun and you know, right angles to it, how fast you gotta go, and that's the orbital velocity. The slowest orbital velocity, and that's for a circle. And that's the one we'll be dealing with. We'll assume circles. Circles is just as fast as you need to go. And then any faster you start going in ellipse, a bigger, 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 bigger ellipse until boom, you're gone. And again, for the Earth, that ranges from about eight, about 17,500 miles per hour to I think that's about 22,000 miles per hour or something. You could do the math and figure it out. Okay, so circular orbits are the slowest orbits. They're not stable because if you slow down at all, you hit a little bit of dust in your orbit, that's it, you're spiraling in, you're going too slow and you're gonna spiral in and you're gonna hit the sun. So circles are not stable. No planets have circular orbits because if they did, they probably would have spiraled in and hit the sun by now. They're always at least a little bit elliptical. The more elliptical you are, the safer you are. 
Except then you get further away at times, and so you have seasons, kind of when you're close to the sun, it's warmer. Further away, it's colder. Um, but, <clears throat> so anyway, but we're going to deal with circles because just the bare, this little, the math is harder for ellipses. Um, that's what Isaac Newton was able to figure out. Um, he invented calculus to do it, to work out all the ellipse stuff. Um, but we're just going to stick with circles because the circular math is real easy. So here's the way it works. So when you're going around the sun, when you're orbiting around the sun, let me draw a cleaner picture here. So here, let's say this is our orbit, nice circle, just barely fast enough, and here's the sun. Okay, so we'll call the distance to the sun R. Um, we, that's about 150 million kilometers, or 93 million miles. Um, so we're going around the sun. So what, why do we go around the sun? Well, there's a force, a centripetal force, pulling us in, right? Gravity. Gravity is we want to go in a straight line, right? We want to go this way. Um, but gravity keeps pulling us towards it. So gravity supplies the centripetal force. So that's all you got to know. Um, the centripetal force, Fc, is, and we know the Fc is, and the, the, here's the mass of the sun, is, of the earth is little m, mass of the sun is big m. Centripetal force, to hold something like the earth in a circle, is mv squared over r, right? r is the distance to the center of the circle where the sun is. That's a Chap uh, formula for one of our last chapters, centripetal force is mv squared over r. Well, what's supplying the centripetal force is the force of gravity, which is g, little m, mass of the earth, mass of the sun, divided by the distance to the center again. So always the center squared. So that's it. Notice, doesn't matter how heavy the earth is, um, the masses cancel. So then we just solve for v. Here is an r in the bottom. Multiply both sides by r. That takes away the squared takes with it R in the bottom. So we're left with V squared is equal to GM over R. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, so V then, take the square root of both sides. The velocity to go in a circular orbit is the square root of big G times the mass of the sun or whatever it is you're orbiting um, divided by the radius of the orbit. And this is why we use R here because it's like the radius of the orbit. So R, the center to, this, to the center of the whatever it is you're orbiting. So it's the radius of the orbit. And the mass is the object being orbited, right? The big M is not the mass of the thing going in a circle. It's the object that's orbited. Um, so it turns out, and I think they asked this in the questions and stuff, it doesn't matter how heavy the, uh, the object is orbiting, it's going to go in the same speed around what it is. So in other words, if you want something else to orbit at the same place the Earth is at the same speed, it doesn't matter what its mass is. All you got to do is get it going this fast, which is about, if we do this math, we'd get about 8 kilometers per second, and it will orbit. So the point here is that if you look at a planet and you know how fast it's orbiting, you don't know how heavy the planet is. It does not matter what the mass of the planet is. All it's got to do is be at a certain distance, r, and go a certain speed, and it will orbit the same way, independent of mass. So you can't tell, like we can't tell how heavy the moon is by its orbiting the earth, but we can tell how heavy the earth is by the moon. The moon can tell us how heavy the earth is. You can tell the mass of the orbiting object, uh, of the object being orbited, right? So we know how fast the moon is going around us. We can figure out the mass of the earth. To figure out the mass of the moon, we have to see something orbit around it. You have to measure the speed of something orbiting around it. Okay, so now notice that from last chapter, we derived really simply that the force of gravity we know is also mg, which is mm, uh, forgot the big G, over r squared. I'll put a big R like the radius of the orbit here, um, to the center of the planet. So the m's cancel. So we have little g is big G times m over r squared. And I'll write that the way I wrote the other one, the G's on the top here, so it looks more like it. So is big G M over R squared. Well, that's really similar to this, right? But we have an R squared in the bottom. So that's the same thing as R times G M. Uh, uh, yeah, that's the same thing as 1 over R. Sorry, as... 1 over r times gm over r, which is the same thing as, uh, or, or, okay, yeah, then we multiply both sides by, here's what I'm trying to do, multiply both sides by r, 
So R times G is the same thing as GM over R. That's what I was trying to show. So multiply G times R takes away one of the R's in the bottom. We're left with this. So we could rewrite this formula up here as V is equal to, because GM over R is the same as RG, right? GM over the R is the same as RG. So it's a square root, square root of the, I'm going to put the G first, it just looks better, put G times R. So if you know, if you have a certain G, you're measured on a planet, and you want to know how fast you got to orbit it, you just take your G, which on Earth is 9.8, multiply by how far you are from the center of whatever it is you're orbiting, and then you can get the velocity. And if you're above the planet, it doesn't matter. This is always a distance wherever you are, what's the G where you are, how far are you from the center of the planet, you can figure out your orbital velocity. We can write an ORB here, because keep it straight, that's the orbital velocity, which is, again, we figured out, depending on what math you have, is just big G times the mass of the object being orbited divided by the radius. Okay, now it turns out, if you want to escape the planet, and you have to use calculus to do that, because the force changes, the, how, you know, as you go further and further away, gravity gets weaker, but it's really nice. The escape velocity, V escape, is just put a 2 inside the square root. So it's the same thing as square root of 2 gr, which is the square root of 2 gm over r. It's really simple. You just put a 2 inside the square root. So in other words, the escape velocity is square root of 2 times the orbital velocity. So, it turns, so if orbital velocity is 8, 11.2 is the square root of 2 times 8. So if you know one, you know the other. Really easy math. So we can just write that down. If you want to know the escape velocity, it's just the square root of 2 times the orbital velocity. And that's how fast you got to go to escape a planet and leave it forever. You want to throw a ball up and it never falls down, right? They always say what goes up must come down. Well, that's not really true. If you can throw it up at the escape velocity, it won't come down. Of course, with air resistance, it'll slow down. But if it can get out of the air by that speed, it'll be gone forever. And that's what they have to do to get stuff to, you know, spacecraft to Jupiter and stuff. They have to escape the Earth. They got to go at least 11.2 kilometers per second. Um, and they use rockets. You can't throw it all at once. You got to keep going faster and faster and faster. Um, but they don't escape the sun. To escape the sun is a lot harder. Um, they got to go a lot faster to escape the sun. Okay, that is the main idea of this planet, how things orbit. And again, we'll assume circular orbits. We're not going to worry about elliptical orbits. Um, but the idea with elliptical orbits, and this is a big thing that they talk about. So here is, let's say, here's the sun again. And here's the Earth, and I'm going to exaggerate the ellipse. If you saw the Earth's orbit, you would think it was a perfect circle. So we do not go in a big ovalish thing like this. But let's pretend we did. Some objects do. Um, so here's the Earth. Right here, it's further away from the Sun, right? And then here, it's closest. This place is called perihelion. This is called aphelion. You no, know from um, I think people say aphelion if you know from astronomy. Um, if you are closer. Uh, sorry, if you are further, you have more potential energy, right? Because we know potential energy is mgh. And here we have like a big H. You're high above the sun. So here we have a lot of potential energy. So we have big potential energy. And so therefore, the kinetic energy is smaller. So I'm going to put a little tiny ke. Big potential energy, small kinetic energy. So you're going to be going slower here because kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So as we go around the sun, our potential energy and kinetic energy change. As we go further, we get more potential, less kinetic, we go slower. Right over here, h is smaller, so mgh is smaller, so we have a big kinetic energy and a small potential energy. So here we're going faster, so we go a lot faster when we're close to the sun, we go slower when we're away from the sun. So we go fast here. Turns out for the Earth, this is like in about January. We're close in January, about farthest in July. Um, so you go faster, slower, as potential energy and kinetic energy keep switching back and forth. However, the sum of them, when you add them together, it's a constant. But they can change, right? Potential energy can get bigger kinetic energy, but they always have our energy as we go around the sun is always the same. So that's kind of interesting. Um, they go back and forth. So that's why our speed changes different times of the year. But again, our orbit's practically a circle. Um, so... Okay, the, uh, so the, the problems in the chapter are basically to deal with these different formulas. 
um, the speed around the sun, the orbital velocity. All you gotta do is be able to plug in numbers. Um, be careful with, with scientific notation. It's basically exercises in using your calculator and scientific notation and kind of understanding how these things work. Um, like for instance, if you wanna fire off a satellite from the Earth, you wanna fire it off from the equator because if you're here, say here's the Earth and here's the equator. Okay, so there's the equator, here's the North Pole, here's the South Pole. Um, here on the equator, you're going really fast because you're going in a big circle, the biggest circle possible in 24 hours. Up here where we are, we go in a smaller circle and here you go in a tiny circle. So here we're going about a thousand miles per hour if you're on the equator. Where we are, we spin about 700 miles per hour and the North Pole doesn't, all it does is turn around, right? It doesn't spin at all. So satellites are easiest to launch on the equator because you get a thousand miles per hour for free. So you always want to launch the satellite in the direction the Earth spins, which is towards the east. So satellites are launched east. If you fire satellites north-south, it doesn't matter where you are because the spin doesn't help you. But if you want to go, just get one up there. You want to go to the equator. If you want to go east to west, because you get a thousand miles per hour for free. And remember, we got to get to the orbital velocity is about 17,500 miles per hour. So you can use a slightly weaker rocket, which saves a lot of money um, if you go to the equator, because um, you get that thousand miles per hour for free. And that's why they fire off rockets in the United States, like it um, down south, like in Houston and in Florida, um, like at Cape Canaveral and stuff, where they fired off stuff to go to the moon. Because they just want to get something in orbit, you get that for free. All right, um, let's see. Okay, so some other things. Um, so we know that we set the centripetal force equals the gravitational force because gravity supplies centripetal force, right? We did that math, it's super easy. R squared, the M's cancel, and we can solve for velocity. But here's a really cool thing. What is the velocity if you're going in a circle? So if you're going in a circle, you go two pi r, the circumference and a certain amount of time t, where t is the period for the Earth, it's one year, right? So you go with circumference of a circle and the period it takes to go in a circle. And, you know, the Earth is one year. That can be nice. So v squared, square, every, <clears throat> square everything here. 2 squared is 4, pi squared, r squared divided by t squared. So let's plug that in over here for t squared. So v squared is 4 pi squared r squared divided by t squared. That's here just in the centripetal force formula. Divide it by r, so I put another r in the bottom, and that's equal to gm over r squared. <clears throat> well, let's see, this r squared cancels out the r. We still have this r there, but only one of them. Um, let's solve for how long it takes to go in an orbit now. That's t, the time it takes to orbit. So I'm going to put the t squared over here, um, and let's see, then everything else over here. So I'm going to switch these guys. So, yep, so I'm going to do this all in one fell swoop here. If I multiply this side by r squared over gm, so gm's in the bottom, <clears throat> r squared's in the top, I get 4 pi squared r cubed, because this r squared times out r makes it r cubed. And on the bottom we have gm. And over here we have t squared. Put the t squared over here, switch the t squared and the gm, t squared and the gm, put the r squared on top. So we have a 4 pi squared r cubed. Okay, so it turns out the time it takes to go around a planet squared is proportional to the radius of the planet cubed. All these things here are constant. You just plug them in, right? 4 pi squared, big G, 6.67 to negative 11, the mass of the planet. So if you want to know how long it takes to orbit a planet and you know how far away you are from the planet and the mass of the planet, well, in other words, you could figure out how long it takes if you know how far away you are and the mass. Um, this was one of Kepler's laws. Kepler's law says that the time squared is proportional to the radius cubed. And this is how Newton derived it. With just math, simple math like we just did, three steps, Newton was able to derive one of Kepler's laws, famous thing in astronomy, um, just by setting the centripetal force equal to the gravitational force. And he did this at home all by himself, going, oh, cool, that's awesome, I just derived this formula. A um, really famous formula is called Newton's version 
of Kepler's third law. But if you want to know the period, how long it takes to go around, you just take the square root of all this stuff. So how long it takes to orbit something is the square root of 4 pi squared r cubed divided by gm. Pretty cool. So you can figure that out if you know these constants. Okay, that's basically what chapter 14 is about. Um, so the questions and stuff, just kind of ask questions about, you know, understanding these things. And, um, and I think, and then the problems are just about dealing with plugging in big numbers into these equations and not forgetting this scientific notations and cubing things. And, you know, it's a lot of calculator work. Easy, but calculator work, which is hard, which is easy to make mistakes. And then you got to worry about units, like seconds, right? If you plug in the radius in meters, which is what we always want, because G is in meters and mass in kilograms, you're going to get seconds, how many seconds it takes. And okay, there's going to be a lot of seconds because it takes years, right? So it's a lot of units and stuff work, but it's not the math. Yeah, easy math, but hard calculating, I guess. That's how that works. Um, okay, good. Thanks for listening.